All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. In this video, we're going to talk about what Tim Bradley has to say about the about Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. Uh, I don't agree with him, but let's cover it in this video. Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy for nine. Welcome back to all of the Terrence Crawford fans, Errol Spence fans, and all of the above uh, guys that like both Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence Jr. Tim Bradley, who is definitely in the camp of guys that like uh, Terrence Crawford, made a prediction for the Errol Spence Jr. versus Terrence Crawford fight if it happens. He's been kind of going on about this for a while. So and I really I don't think that I've addressed it necessarily, but I'm going to do it in this video, which is that he believes that not only now does he believe that Terrence Crawford will beat uh, Errol Spence Jr. He now believes that he's going to knock him out and believes that says that Ter Errol Spence Jr. doesn't have anything but a jab. And once Terrence Crawford gets past Errol Spence Jr.'s jab, there will be nothing that Ter Errol Spence Jr. can do with Terrence Crawford. That is the sum. That is the sum total of it. Now, before I get into what I think, let me do this first to make all of my friends, because I know we're you guys are subscribed to the channel, and we talk about when we talk about Javante Davis, we get along. We talk about Deontay Wilder or Canelo Alvarez. Everybody, well, not Canelo Alvarez. A whole bunch of people don't agree with me on Canelo Alvarez. We all seem to get along just fine. But when Terrence, but when Terrence Bud Crawford comes up, you guys harp on the fact that I am a hater. So let me inter let me say this before I get into the rest of it. Terrence Crawford is the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. I do believe that he is a better pound for pound fighter than Canelo Alvarez. I think that he's a better pound for pound fighter than Errol Spence Jr. I think that he is the best when it comes to boxers in the in the world right now. I think all around Terrence Crawford is the best boxer. I do not know how much more praise I can give that man besides that. However, when it comes to the fight with Errol Spence Jr., I favor Errol Spence Jr. to beat him. Now, what Tim Bradley says, and look, I'm going to tell you, I'm a boxing fan. I am not a former professional boxer. Ter when, if you were going to listen to somebody based on their experience in the ring, by all means, go with Tim Bradley. I don't have a problem with you agreeing with Tim Bradley. Tim Bradley says that all, all um, Errol Spence Jr. has is a jab. And after that, once Terrence Crawford gets past that jab, that, you know, it's going to be downhill for him. If you want to believe that, knock yourself out. For me, however, I'm looking at what Terrence Crawford is doing in the ring and saying, nah, I don't know about that. Because uh, Terrence Crawford is fighting in a southpaw stance all the time, and that is a southpaw and a southpaw matchup. Or to air, and if he doesn't want a southpaw and a southpaw matchup, this is Terrence Crawford. He's going to have to fight in an orthodox stance. If he fights in an orthodox stance, that takes away Terrence Crawford's jab, and it also means that Errol Spence Jr. is in a position where Errol's going to be more comfortable with than he is, based off the basic stances that the guy that the guys are in. Also, Errol Spence Jr. is a pressure fighter and he is a very fundamentally sound fighter. And I don't think there are very many holes or gaps for, Ter for Terrence Crawford to take advantage of and to expose over the length of the fight. Unlike Sean Porter, Errol Spence Jr. is not going to be leaning in and falling forward with his chin exposed. He's not going to do that. He's going to be somebody that is very, very balanced. Now, on the other side of it, I've heard people say, well, Errol Spence Jr.'s attack is too linear. He's too much in a straight, in a straight line. And as a result, Errol Terrence Crawford is, once he gets... It, once he slips to the side or gets to the side or takes angles on Errol Spence Jr., that he'll be able to take advantage of him by by taking angles on Errol Spence Jr. And to that, I say, OK, I've never seen anybody do that. So maybe that is a potential. Maybe that is a potential. However, please, when you watch this fight with Sean Porter, this is what I would ask you to notice that that was a very, very close fight throughout the entire throughout the entire fight up until around the 10th round. 
Errol Terrence Crawford was getting hit on a regular basis by Sean Porter, even though Sean Porter was going in there kind of reckless. And more importantly, Terrence uh, um, Sean Porter is not as highly skilled and is not as clean or effective with his punches as Errol Spence Jr. is. If Terrence Crawford fights Errol Spence Jr. and gets down and has that first half of the fight, I don't think that he is going to be able to say, okay, well, let me time Errol Spence Jr. and start hitting Errol Spence Jr. to the, to the, to the chest and then have Errol Spence Jr.'s father grab a towel and throw it in. I just don't think it's going to happen. I do not foresee it happen that way. I really believe that the fact that, that Errol Spence Jr. is bigger than Terrence Crawford, that he's also very, very fat. And that's another thing that for me that is very, under, very underrated is the basic fundamentals of Errol Spence. If you look at guys like, and the fact that he is a pressure fighter, every there are great fighters that have a lot of difficulties with pressure fighters because they're trying to figure them out and air and Sean Porter is not effective in his aggression. He's not effective in his, in, in, um, in what he was doing with Terrence Crawford. Primarily, I do believe because the book was already out on to on Sean Porter. Terrence Crawford knew exactly how, how to go about fighting Sean Porter. And it was a matter of time until he caught him, which by the way, is why I predicted that Terrence Crawford was going to knock out uh, Sean Porter around the 11th round. I said, look, man, I can see him over time being effective in the early rounds, but it eventually went the way that he lunges in and he jumps in at Terrence Crawford. He's going to go back to that, and Terrence Crawford is going to take a little step back, and he's going to counter him, and he's going to hit him with something really, really big, and eventually he's going to drop Sean Porter. And I think that's what, and I think that's what we saw. I think that is an entirely different beast than a bigger so a bigger, more fundamentally a sound, a sound, aggressive fighter in 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 Errol Spence Jr. However, I will say this again: just because that's what I believe does not necessarily mean that that's what's going to happen. I do understand that it is a basically a fifty. I think it's a like a fifty-one forty-nine fight for, for me for Errol Spence Jr. There's also clearly issues about whether or not Errol Spence Jr. is going to be the same coming off of the accident. The fact is, Errol Spence Jr. Has, did not knock out Danny Garcia. He didn't knock. He didn't knock out Sean Porter. He didn't knock out Mikey Garcia. So you could say, okay, hey, that is maybe a reason why you may pick Terrence Crawford. However, I would like to point out to that that Errol Spence Jr. The first of all, the number of rounds lost by Errol Spence Jr. to Sean Porter, I think, is highly exaggerated. Errol Spence Jr. for me was in control of that fight that entire was in control of that fight or was winning that fight the entire time. However, he was going to town on Terrence Crawford. He was not on Errol Spence Jr. Uh, on on um Sean Porter and trying to beat Sean Porter up and get him out of there and really try to make a war out of it. Errol Spence Jr. does not have to fight that way. And he didn't have to fight that way against Sean Porter. He also fought that way. He didn't fight that way against uh, Danny Garcia, and he just went out there and outboxed Danny Garcia and won the fight going away. There is the ability that Errol Spence Jr. has shown with both Mikey Garcia and Danny Garcia to just box his way to a win. And I'm telling you, with with Terrence Crawford, is it, the way that you saw the boxing going back and forth, the the boxing going back and forth with Sean Porter and and Terrence Crawford when those guys were out there and trying to figure it out each other, dude. Errol Spence Jr. is a much better boxer than 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 Sean Porter is, and I think he'll give Errol. I think he, he will surprise people with Errol's uh, with Terrence Crawford in his boxing ability. And I do believe that it is more than just a jab. However, we will see when the fight takes place. Again, Ter uh, Tim Bradley says Errol's nothing but a jab. If you believe that Terrence Crawford, that, that Tim Bradley believes that, okay. Tim Bradley has also said a lot of other crazy stuff when he's trying, when he's supporting his boy Terrence Crawford, and that, and he's been saying stuff in, uh, you know, taking shots at PBC fighters for a while. But you know, it is what it is. It's all hopefully, and I do believe that we will see this fight next year. Um, I don't believe that Terrence Crawford is running for the fight. I don't believe Errol Spence Jr. is running for the fight. And hopefully we will see it. You let me know what you think in the comment section. No. And with that, and also like the video, share the video, all that good stuff. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.